Good morning, everyone. This morning, we are holding the Shakamani Puja's birthday uh, ceremony. When I was uh, in elementary school, my teacher uh, told us, uh, why don't we write that down? What we are grateful, what we are indebted to our father, so I thought about that, and I wrote it down. Probably I remember just a couple of things. Uh, when I do some errand for my father, he gave me some money or from time to time he brings some chocolates or other, other sweets uh, when he go home. I cannot recall anything that I am grateful for to my father at the time. But later, when I become older, and uh, I realized uh, the person who provides all the things uh, in my house is my father. He pays the rent and, and so on. Just as uh, I was very young and immature, I did not recognize how grateful to my father. Likewise, usually ordinary people do not feel grateful to the things and the saints and the sages, Buddhas and Bodhisattva are bestowed to us. The Sotesang, our founding master, said in this way, ordinary people do not understand the merit the rain and the dew brings to heaven and earth. They do not understand the merit that sages bring to the world. Therefore, only after a drought will everyone appreciate the rain. Only after sages have departed will everyone realize the gracious merit of their dharma. Many years ago, when I was in Korea, uh, during the summertime, I stayed for a couple of days in Pyeonsan. Pyeonsan is the place where our founding master wrote the one Buddhist canon. <clears throat> From that retreat center to the nearby creek, uh, just uh, takes uh, 30 minutes a walk. So after dinner, I went uh, to the creek and uh, some, spent some time. Almost uh, all of a sudden, the moon was covered by thick cloud. The world became completely dark. It became pitch dark. I could not uh, see like uh, a couple of uh, feet ahead of me. So it's uh, in the mountain area. On my way back to the retreat center building, I almost uh, fumbled uh, my way back to the retreat center. It took uh, two hours, almost two hours. Uh, I fell down a couple of times. But from some perspective, uh, what's the big deal? It took uh, one hour, two hours, three hours uh, to find the retreat center back. Or I fell down three times or four times. But usually, the path for us to find the eternity, eternal life, or the path to find the, the path of indestructible happiness and freedom, that's a pretty big deal. Hmm? And, and that's very important, and the path can be more dark to us. For example, do you clearly know what will happen or what can happen after our death? Carlos? I didn't understand the question. What will happen after our death? I don't think anybody really knows. <laughs> yeah. Or what can be the best way to practice? Different tradition provide a different path of spiritual practice. 
That's really, really very important thing. But the path to there is really, really very dark. Sung Chan, he is the third patriarch of the Chinese Zen Buddhism. He had a kind of a disease. In modern terms, I think it's kind of a leprosy. He was bothered by some skin disease. And according to their culture, he believed he had that because of his past karma, some bad karma in his previous lives. And when he met the master, Hega, the second patriarch of Chinese Zen Buddhism, he asked me, my mind is really uncomfortable. I'm really in agony because of my sin. And the master asked, show me your sin. Bring me to me your sin. And Sung Chan hesitated for a moment. At the time he was very young. When I try to show you my sin, I cannot find that. I do not know where it is. Then the master replied, then I already dissolved your sin. And under that word, the third the patriarch, Sang Chan, got his first awakening. The teacher tried to teach him the nature of mind. And then the second patriarch said to Sang Chan, now you now trust to take refuge in the three treasures, three gems. What is a three treasure in Buddhism? Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. What is the Buddha? It can be Jesus, Shakamuni Buddha, or Sotesa. They are the completely realized ones. It, and also it is inner light within ourselves, the Buddhahood. Dharma is the teaching of the Buddha. It is the path to discover our inner light. What is Sangha or spiritual community? It is kind of a sporting system for us, for practitioners, to discover that path and restore the Buddhahood within ourselves. Today, uh, let's talk about, uh, about the first uh, treasure of Buddha. They say life is uh, a journey. But our practice is also a journey, yeah? don't you think so? The, the journey to reach Buddhahood, restore our true self, which is full of compassion, wisdom, and potentials or kind of power. The journey can be very smooth, smooth sailing, or sometimes it can be very rocky road. And on that journey, from time to time, we encounter some forked road. So when we reach there, we choose some path. Depending on our choice, our life can be very difficult, or sometimes our life can be very easy, depending on our choice or decision. For example, after the dinner service, uh, which restaurant you are going for lunch? It does not matter that much. Yeah. I should buy uh, Samsung Galaxy or iPhone. That kind of choice is not that matter. But the choice, uh, should I marry that person? Or should I this uh, occupation as my whole life a job. That's pretty important or crucial. Usually when we make some choice, then 
we usually rely on our own judgment or just to follow or listen to the advice of other people and so on. Usually, we usually follow the social value system when you decide something. For example, how can I download some music from the computer? You can ask somebody, for example, at the one Dharma and I use Alaska, the Reverend Joe Doksan. Or how can I buy some cheap airplane ticket? Hmm? Still, I ask the Reverend Joe about <laughs> the type of computer related one. But what can be the best practice way that really fit to me? Or what is the, we always try to search for happiness, but the happiness which is not momentary but eternal and everlasting. What is the path? This is all people, each and every person want. Whom are you, are you asked for those questions? Then these are pretty important things. As for this type of questions, what can be the best path of a practice or what is the path to indestructible freedom or happiness? Yeah. Mm-hmm. We usually do that. That is one of the things that we do. Yeah. How about John? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We can pass through trial and the error process, but for those questions, we can just ask to put us and the bodhisattvas, because they already know the path to there, because uh, they are the persons uh, who already reached the nirvana. You know, the, in the Hebrew scripture, the Noah the story, Noah, when they received a divine revelation because of the human sin, God will punish them with a flood, with a lot of water. And he started to build a ship on a very sunny day. So everybody in the village left. He's a crazy old man. He started to build a ship at the top of the mountain, not the shore of the river. Most of the people thought that he's insane. But the people who listened to just that one person's word said, their lives. Many times uh, we do not have to listen to how other people, how majority of the people think or act. When I look around the people, whether they are Americans or Koreans or African, Americans or Caucasians, most of the people do not live that happily, let alone knowing the path to nirvana. You know what? Even among the best practice path, even among enlightened masters, uh, their opinion is uh, slightly different, sometimes uh, very different. For example, before practicing sitting meditation, we practice the chanting meditation. Some Zen master says, even though you chant five or six hours, it is not that meritorious as a practicing sitting meditation for five hours, for five minutes. But a lot of Tibetan masters and our founding master say the different thing. In some tradition, while you practice the sitting meditation, you better work with some spiritual question to concentrate your mind. 
So in Zen tradition, the teachers give the students some quite like some paradoxical uh, spiritual question, uh, like uh, what's the sound of a one hand clapping? In Korea, the dominant Buddhist school is a Zen school. Jogejong, they followed uh, basically the Zen tradition. And when I first practiced the sitting meditation, I worked with the quad. But I have some inner conflict that that kind of method did not work to me very well. I could not easily settle down my mind or could not focus my mind to the, to the quad. But when I read the one Buddhist scripture, our founding master said, that for most of the people, it is far more effective way. When you practice sitting meditation, just a practice sitting. Just the same. You can just follow God. And when you have some available time of the meditation question, then you can work some spiritual question. That is a far more effective way. For example, when you go to the Caskill Mountain, at the foot of the mountain, we may not know which is the shortcut to the top of the mountain. The person who stands on the top of the mountain can overview which is the path, which trail is around about the way. Likewise, Buddhas and the Bodhisattvas, the ones who stand at the top of the mountain, they are the persons who attained the supreme enlightenment. So for some matter, we can thought for ourselves, by ourselves. That's a pretty good approach. But we really listen to the words of the Buddhas and the Bodhisattvas. Actually, all those words are contained in the scripture. Or our dilemmas of how to overcome our obstacles in our daily life as well as in the process of our practices. The answer is already in the scripture, in the Dharma. I think I have told this story. One right after Korean well, the Korean society was a little uh, unstable, especially for many Westerners. One day, one American, uh, middle-aged lady, when she drove her home from the rural area to her house, she got a flat tire. She has never changed the tire before. She was a little embarrassed. It's in the rural area, and uh, it's uh, completely dark, and so on. While she was uh, trying to change the tire, one car was uh, pulled over in front of her, and the one very tall person in a ragged clothes uh, came out of the car. She was very scared, and she immediately retreated herself in her car and uh, locked the door. So that young person knew what's going on in her mind. And uh, actually, he was a car mechanic. Changing tire is a piece of a cake. After he changed the tire, and, uh, and the, he was about to move away, the lady realized he's a very, very good man. And she came out of the car and asked her name. What is your name? How can I uh, pay to you? And he introduced, but English was very, very low. He, he has a very low schooling background. He said his name and uh, he told her the address where he lived. And he left. And you owe me nothing. That's okay. Several days uh, later, the young man, his job was uh, to buy. He made a living buying a lot of uh, some discarded cars, used the cars and uh, fix that and uh, sell that. That's how he made uh, his living. Several American soldiers and one middle-aged person entered his uh, shop. He was very scared of what's wrong in my shop. What did I wrong? But 
that middle-aged man introduced himself. He's a, a army general. He fought in the Korean War. And uh, you helped my wife three days ago. So my wife asked me to visit your shop. So how can I help you? So he was relieved. And uh, well, I make a living by collecting a lot of buying, a lot of used car and fix and resell that on the market. So if you happen to have some vehicles, you are going to discard them. Why don't you give them to me? From the next week, he was the army general. He started to receive a lot of good cars, a lot of cars in a pretty good shape. Based on that, he made a lot of money. His business started to prosper, and then he established the Hanjin, Hanjin Expressway. Several years ago, Hanjin Heavy Industries. And then, when he was old, he established the Korean Airline. This is the story of the president of the Korean Airline and the Hanjin Heavy Industries. You may think he's a very, very lucky person. And he happened to meet the one or that, the wife of the army general. But we needed to know the person who met the Buddha's Dharma is a far more lucky person, far more blessed person. Because uh, sure, he was a really lucky person. Hmm? But the person who met the Dharma find out it's a kind of a, obtaining some treasure map, treasure map, to restore our true self. the path to indestructible happiness and the freedom. In all the days in Israel, Jewish people, Jewish men are not supposed to Gentiles. Let me read the Bible story. So one Gentile Samaritan woman came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me some water to drink. The Samaritan woman said to him, how can you, a Jewish people, ask me for water to drink? Jesus answered her, if you had known the gift of God and who it is who said to you, you would say, give me some water to drink. And he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said to him, you have no bucket, and the well is very deep. Well then, do you get this living water? Jesus replied, everyone who drinks some of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks some of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. But the water that I will give him will become in him a fountain of water, springing up to eternal life. They say the chance uh, to be born as a human being and meet the Buddha is very, very slim. They usually, uh, in the Zen tradition, they usually say, Mengu Mo, Mengu Mo. This uh, phrase literally means blind turtle meeting the wooden piece, wooden piece, the legend. Has it? There was a blind turtle living ocean. In order to take a breath, he comes to the surface once in a thousand years. But it's a blind. In order to take a breath, when he come out to the surface, his chin should be on some floating wood material. But since he's, he's a blind, how can he find out that wooden piece floating in the ocean? That kind of a chance is the chance for us to be born as human beings 
and uh, meet the Buddha's Dharma. I heard that, that type of thing a lot of times, but I could not feel that. Every, every being around me is a human, so why, why the chance is uh, so sleep? But when I happen to see one animal planet in some cable table, it says, uh, in, in the early spring, the number of uh, flies, some particular type of a fly, in order to mate, they gather on the surface of the Victoria Lake in Africa, uh, one of the biggest lakes uh, on Earth. Uh, you know, the number of that particular fly is uh, billions, not millions, billions. Think about the number of uh, other types of uh, flies or insects, or the number of uh, fish in the ocean. Really, the chance of being born as a human is exactly like the Buddha says, is so, so slim. And our founding master said, your meeting me is just like a blind person grabbing hold of a door handle. Since you have already held it, you are to keep hold it firmly. If you are careless and let it go, it will not be easy to take a hold of it again. So many people just uh, try to copy the life of uh, celebrities. They are rich, famous, but uh, their life, uh, most of them do not live in a very, very happy way. Letting alone mentioning the destination where they will eventually reach. But when we copy the lives of all the Buddhas and the Bodhisattvas, then, then we will definitely reach the happiness, the level of happiness that leads us to the everlasting freedom. So there are many meetings and relationships that we cannot control. For example, our meeting our parents, or meeting our siblings, uh, that is not what you choose. Uh, but our meeting with the Buddhas and the Bodhisattva is uh, what we choose. For example, when you come here, it is uh, strengthening the karmic tie with the Buddha. They say meditation is the mind of the Buddha. The words, scriptures are the words of the Buddha, the mouth of the Buddha. The precepts are the deeds, the actions of the Buddha. So meeting the real Buddha is to actually meditate and study scriptures and join the Sangha and live in a very ethical way. And they say, there is a Chinese saying, it is a teacher who opens the door, but it is the student who enters the door. We actually actualize the Buddha's teaching. So, any congratulations on the Buddha's birthday. And that lotus lantern symbolized the inner wisdom, the Buddha within ourselves. So when you leave, bring that lotus to your house and meditate in front of that. Okay, thank you.